Alright, today we're going to be tearing apart a mid-90s Bayou 300. I pulled a couple covers off here. I just did a um, valve clearance check, and so you can check that video out on my YouTube page. Um, but we're going to go ahead and start tearing this motor down. Start with the cylinder head. We'll pull that camshaft, pull a cylinder piston, uh, stator flywheel, all of that. So first thing, we've got four cylinder head bolts up here. But we're going to go ahead and take apart this, uh, or take off this um, cam chain tensioner. It's two 10 millimeters. And this motor here is extremely dirty. So if you're doing any kind of maintenance at all, you'll want to do a way better job of cleaning this up. But this one is, um, we're going to go ahead and just tear this down. Everything will get cleaned up uh, after it's tore down. So we've got two 10 millimeter bolts here. And you will have to pull that this uh, camshaft cover to get to these bolts. We got the recoil pull, pull starter off here. That's four eight millimeter bolts. That's these here. And then we'll pull the camshaft once we get that tension off. There's no more um, the tension over here. There's no more tension on this chain. So. Um, we're able to pull that cam sprocket off. If we were to pull that cam sprocket off um, while we, before we took that tension out, we could potentially have damaged that crank, or that, excuse me, that cam shaft, and we wouldn't want to do that. So 12 millimeter, pull this bolt off here, pull the cam shaft off. And then we've got 14, like I said, 14 millimeter bolts up top here. And these are torqued down generally really well, so they are, a lot of times we've got these bigger impacts. Make sure when you're going back together that those get torqued down. There's your cylinder head bolt. Cam chain is off. We are ready to pull this head. Now, you don't want to use a crowbar and damage these um, fins here, but you can get in a spot and make sure you're prying on the right thing to where you don't even have to use a whole lot of pressure at all to lift that head up out of there. So enough just to break that gasket generally is what you have to do. Now to pull these rocker arms, there's a Phillips screw in there. Um, and you get that Phillips screw out and those rocker arms will just slide out. It's got some oil up in that cylinder head. So we'll let that drain there. We've got your cam chain here and your two guides. Here's your first guide there. And your other guide will have to take off once we pull this stator flywheel assembly. Got your cylinder that we'll pull off. That takes a 10 millimeter wrench. Just one bolt here on the side. Takes a fairly small, this ratchet wrench here is gonna be too thick. I'm not able to get in there. Here is your cylinder head gasket here. And then below this cylinder is your base gasket. Never want to reuse these gaskets. It's crucial that they seal because you're going to have some serious motor problems. Take and tap, same thing, kind of just break that seal, flip that up out of there. This cylinder happens to be in really good condition. Uh, we'll measure it and make sure it doesn't need board out, make sure it's round in round. There's your cylinder there. You want to make sure there's no scoring. You don't want to reuse a scored cylinder. Um, you can get a board out or uh, just replace the cylinder. Now we're going to pull this piston here. So doing the top end on this one, you'll pull this piston. If all we're doing is replacing the um, piston cylinder, a lot of times um, rings need replaced. And you wouldn't have to remove this the piston if that's the case, but let's just say we're having to remove this um, piston. Pull these clips out here, get a pick, 
Um, put your, put your um, pick in that groove on the piston and pry out this little circlip here. I try to keep my thumb over top of it so it doesn't go flying and so it doesn't drop into the motor. But that's the circlip there. Then you can just take and push that pin out. If that pin is stuck, um, you want to make sure you support in behind it before you hit it with anything just so you don't damage that crank. Now to get this pin back on, and this is, um, this is uh, obviously if we're going back together with it, put the, put the clip in um, that way, opposite of the groove there, and then you can take, as long as that stays in there, you can take and pry this back in there. And I won't take a whole lot of time doing that since we're not putting the piston back in right now, but that's how you put that pin back in. Next, we're going to flip this up. We're going to uh, pull that uh, flywheel there in the stator. I'm going to take this cover off here so it's not all over the place. Trying to get this to a spot that you're able to see it. Grab a wood block and set it under here, and hopefully that'll hold it up. All right. Now to pull this stator, let me clean off this dirt here so I can see where this case ends. We're going to pull the eight millimeters around the outside of this. Also going to pull that one. That's 14 millimeter, and I like to hold this. Make sure it doesn't spin. If it spins, your cam chain can bind up there and break your case. Get that bolt out. This is the recoil pull starter cup here or gear. Then we got our eight millimeter. And if we got all those out around that cover there, just take and tap that off. That crankcase, well, that cover here you can see goes right down along the back side of this. So it does have magnets in there, so it's going to be, you got some pressure against it. And there is your stator there, your pulser wires running out here. Here's your flywheel and your Bendix gear, your starter drive here. And then in behind your flywheel is a uh, is your one-way uh, gear. The bearing a lot of times will stick on there. It sits down in that cover there. The impact driver here looks like this. For a Phillips screw like this down in the motor, this makes it a little bit easier. Just one tap on there like that, kind of twists it out. That'll allow us to be able to take this Bendix gear off here. And that's your starter drive there. This attaches directly onto the starter there. We'll grab the flywheel puller here in a second, but we're going to pull this. Um, output assembly off here and a lot of different ways you can do this so we'll we'll give it a shot here and see which, which way works best we've got eight, eight millimeters all the way all the way around here a couple 10 millimeters a whole bunch of 10 millimeters.
taking the reverse arm off here, or at least loosen it up so we can get to that eight millimeter. We've got an oil line running here, and that's a 12 millimeter. Remove that. This is what they call a banjo bolt, where it's got a hole running through the center of it, and then um, just allows oil to flow through there. All right, and then we've got the 10 millimeters all the way around there. Might be getting somewhere here. This cup is aluminum, so generally I would say grab a rubber mallet, tap behind here, but you're going to be really careful you don't tap onto that cup there. Go ahead and remove this cover here that the shift assembly sits down in. Pull that off there, and underneath that, you've got a shift fork. Clean out some of this dirt here. I wouldn't generally tear a motor down like this, but this thing was extremely filthy, and we've got to clean all these parts afterwards, anyways. So. This is that oil line that I'm working on now. We've got an oil line over here. All right, if it wasn't so dirty, we could see what was holding us up. There's one right here. And I'm guessing we've got more than just that one. We've got a 10 millimeter we missed down here, covered up by dirt. There we go, that pulls off. So it's just that, that simple. Now I'm taking, kind of rock that off, try to keep everything in place there. We've got a reverse arm that I didn't completely take all the, that bolt out of there. I'm guessing that's what's holding us up. All right, reverse arm is out of there. Yep, and we're able to pull that off. So there is your transfer gear here, if you can see that. Transfer gear here and here, these two will be replaced at the same time. It uh, transfers um, motors spinning, gears are spinning. Um, just trying to explain here what's going on. So just to get your power going to the back and to the front, you've got this gear assembly here 
Uh, this is called a bevel gear where it, sh it switches direction and now uh, your drive is going front and back. So that's how we get it to the axle. And then on this style you'd have another one of these type of gears in your front differential and in your rear differential. So it goes out here to the rear, goes out right here to the front. So if you've ever got some, um, these are a pretty common wear item um, because that's a lot, I mean this is what's taking completely all the power from the motor to your wheels. So that there's a lot of a lot of tension on those gears there. And they are, it, they are sold together. You want to replace them together. Um, because if one's worn, the other one is worn as well. We've got what looks to be a 22 on this gear here. I like to try to hold this the best that I can. The style of gear that it is doesn't give you a whole lot to hang on to. If I know I can hold it without it spinning, I'll stick something in there, but you do not want that spinning and breaking that gear there. So we'll get that off with a 22 millimeter, and we've got your um, gear indicator switch there. I'll kind of lift that up so you can see as good as you can. It comes out here comes out of your motor here, runs underneath a couple, couple gaskets there. Takes a Phillips screwdriver to remove that. That is your gear indicator uh, sensor there, and then your now your reverse um, shifter here can come off of there now that that sensor is out of the way. So that was um, arms probably underneath uh, right here. This is the arm that you saw with the 10 millimeter bolt holding that in. All right, we will go ahead and pull the flywheel now, the starter gear assembly, flip it over, pull the starter, pull the clutches, and split that case.